So the way I'm going to organise this video is I'm going to start from the battery in the main van itself and then I'm going to work my way back through to the leisure batteries and onwards from those. I'll put timestamps down below if there's something specific you're looking for that you want to know how to do. So in my opinion, one of the most important things to install when you're doing an uh, electrical setup for a van is an isolation switch. This one here actually separates my system from the original auxiliary system in the van. So if I'm going to start this van, the last thing I want to do is actually draw power from my leisure batteries to start the van with. So before I start the van every single time, I will isolate these batteries, meaning that it's only the auxiliary battery providing power to the alternator to get the van started. So coming in from the aux battery, I have 25 mil cable, a 100 amp fuse, and that runs directly into the VSR. As you can see, the VSR is still open at the moment with the van off. So as I was explaining a second ago, this remains open until the voltage drops below 12.6. So that cable then comes out of the VSR, into a 100 amp fuse, and back in out of sight. A very important point to make about the VSRs, if your vehicle has a smart alternator, you can't use um, a VSR because it gives out variable um, voltages, so it just it just won't work. What you'll actually need to use is a DC to DC charger. I will do a separate video on that. So the batteries I've gone for are off of Alpha batteries and they're called the Platinum Advanced. I'll put a little link below. They're both 100 amp hours each and quite frankly we've used them off grid in the Outer Hebrides, in Scotland, in Wales and they've just been fantastic, no issue there. So, it's important with the batteries to make sure they're vented, because they come with this little vent hole here, to make sure you vent them to the outside. Um, as you can see, I've done both of them, I vented that to the outside as well, just to prevent any gases from coming in. The way I've connected the batteries together is with 35 mil cable, and I've gone positive to positive, central on both and then the negative from the negative now i've earthed that with 25 mil cable and that's got a really good grounding point in behind here so i know that these batteries are, are very well earthed now it's important to get an even draw off of all batteries so everything that charges batteries i always run into one and everything that draws from batteries i always run out of the other one so in this first battery we've got the vsr which obviously gives us power from the alternator We've got the solar, which then powers the same battery. And then everything that draws from that comes out of this battery. So we've got the 1000 watt Renergy inverter. We've got a distribution board. And we've got our 240 volt system. So we've got a 16 mil co cable coming off of our distribution battery. That then runs up out into a 50 amp fuse. And this is our main 12-way distribution board, which means you can put 12 different appliances onto it. So in order of appliances in this particular setup, I've got the ceiling fan running in number one. Number two is the diesel heater. Number three, we have all the spotlights in the main van itself. Number four is our LED light setup and USB sockets. Number five is our fridge. And number six is the water pump. I forgot about number seven. Number seven is the spotlights in the garage. So the spotlights are run by a dimmable switch here, on, off. Um, nothing much to note. I've got four in the van. They're 1.5 watts each, and that's plenty for this medium wheelbase transit. So the fridge I've gone for, it's not a compressor fridge, but that doesn't bother me at all. This has been perfectly adequate. This is the extractor fan. Two lights in the garage area. They're perfectly adequate. They light this up really, really well. Now, as always, I fitted an isolation switch in between the battery and the main distribution board in case I ever want to do any work on it. So, it comes from the distribution battery through to a switch here, which is simply just an isolation on-off switch in case I need to do any works on the on the um, electrical on the distribution board or further electrics that side, and then that runs into the distribution board uh, via a fuse again probably gone overkill with all the fuses, but um, it's better to be safe than sorry. Coming out of the distribution battery, it's a thousand watt Renergy inverter. Now you can go bigger if you want, uh, but I just found that price-wise this was good. It limits what you bring. I find if you bring, a two, if you have a 2000 or 3000 watt inverter, you tend to just bring a load of things that you don't need. So a thousand watts for us is great. So 25 mil cable up, 150 amp fuse, up into the inverter itself, and then the negative, runs to the negative on the other battery just to give it an even draw out of the top of the inverter this is the plug for the 240 volt system 
We've also got a remote cable here which goes into the main main van itself so I can switch the inverter on and off from in there. What we've got in here is the on off switch for the inverter so I can control that from in here and we've got a 240 outlet plug which has got two sockets and a USB and a USB-C which is really handy. USB-Cs are the future so make sure you install some USB-Cs. So coming out of the top of the inverter we've got a plug with a 2.5mm twin and earth that then runs into this two-way controller which goes number one for the inverter so if i want to power the 240 system off of the inverter i switch it to number one zero is the whole thing is off doesn't work at all which is good it's another way of isolating everything which as you know i'm a huge fan of and number two that is for your mains hookup so it's a really really useful bit of kit this two-way switch and i was skeptical of putting it in because it's just another thing to add, another thing to wire, but I'm so glad I did. When we have shore power now, switch it to number two, and I know that the inverter's not gonna be drawing any power, it's not gonna be losing power, and the batteries are completely um, isolated from the power that I'm using on the 240. So this is a really good bit of kit. Now our 240 system, I have gone for a reverse polarity um, consumer unit. Now, the reason for this is sometimes if you're plugging in in Europe, like France or something, they actually reverse the lives and the neutrals so this will actually indicate if that's happened and will let me know i would advise you do that it's not compulsory and if you are going somewhere where you know that's happened you can deal with that um, but it's just another stress to avoid um, by buying a reverse polarity consumer unit uh, i've got two systems running off of this i've got one which goes to my 240 volt in the van and then the other fuse goes to this 240 volt socket here this socket here um, runs this plug, which is my charging. This is only a five amp charger. I had it in the garage anyway. I didn't want to buy another one. If I'm on shore power, I will always plug this in and switch it on because it trickle charges the main batteries. But that then runs into the positive, goes into the battery with everything that charges. So VSR, um, solar and this go into there and the negative comes off of the other battery just again to ensure that even flow between the two batteries and then this powers the inverter it's not really necessary and it's unplugged up here but just in case i ever need that that is there as an option so i've never used that yet probably won't ever use it but it's nice to know i've got it in case something goes wrong and i need to use it now we have our energy solar setup which consists of 200 watts of power on the roof and this MPPT charger, it's a 20 amp charger, so I can only have 200 watts of solar, but that's been perfectly adequate for everything we've needed. From the MPPT charger, we've run the positive cable. I think this is 16 mil. This was supplied by Renergy, I believe. And then that runs into the charging side of the batteries. And the negative is this terminal, and that runs into the negative on the other battery. So that again is fused. Everything has to be fused. The wiring from the solar panels up the top positive and negative you don't have to do this but i have isolated them believe it or not i've run the cables down out up into this little fuse what that means is um, i can work on the solar if i need to as every time there's uv rays and sunlight they will be generating power so even with all the appliances off you can't work on the solar unless it's isolated so this is fantastic runs up into the charger it gives you a nice little readout if our camera lady will come over. So we've got 13.8 volts of solar um, at the moment from this Renergy unit. I'm not gonna do too much of a talk on the Renergy solar now. Um, I'll do that in a separate video, but they're really good. I've not had an issue, very happy with what I've put in. It comes with a link to a Bluetooth module as well. So yeah, the Bluetooth module here links up to your phone. They've got a very, very easy to use app as well. I'm not promoting them. I'm not sponsored by them. I just genuinely think they're a good product and very, very competitively priced.